Are you sick of watching the same old crap week to week with your family? Well, I got some old crap you probably haven't seen that's actually pretty damn good. And that's 2015's The Little Prince. Let's talk about it. This film was recommended to me by Owen Menning. He's a Patreon user at the Mithril level. If you become a Patreon at the Mithril level, you not only get to recommend a movie to me, but I have to review it and give you a tip of the hat in the video. So thank you, Owen, for the support, and actually a double thank you because The Little Prince, what a charming flick that was. Well, that's the video. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to the channel as I post tons of movie-related content each and every week. Take care. Now I better do an actual video on this. Based on the classic French children's book, Le Petit Prince, and directed by Mark Osborne, The Little Prince sets out to capture the magic and the wonder of the book and bring it onto the big screen. Now I should clarify for people that are unsure, The Little Prince and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air are not at all related. There, there's no crossover as far as I'm concerned. This isn't a prequel featuring Carlton as The Little Prince. No, it's its own thing. It's very much, it's very much just based on the book. To say this animated film is layered would kind of be doing it a disservice. It's more than layered. There's lots of different ways you can look at the story and it's going to reach people from different vantage points. To some, like The New Yorker for instance, this is a film about war-torn France and leaving the country and wanting to return to a time of innocence before the war began. To others, and this is where I think the movie's really pointing, is to adulthood and how growing up doesn't need to be such a chore or such a bore. The film revolves around a little girl named... Little Girl? They, she doesn't have a name. Nobody has names in this, as a matter of fact. She's voiced wonderfully by Mackenzie Foy. She and her mother, named Mother, voiced by Rachel McAdams, move into a shiny new house right next to a dilapidated old structure that I guess at one point in time resembled something you could live in. And a crazy old kook lives there, which is probably why they could afford the place to begin with. He's simply known as the Aviator, and he's voiced by Jeff Bridges. Why is he called the Aviator and not Old Man? I mean, they're pretty on the nose with these titles. Well, he has a plane and he's often talking about flying it again. So he can get back to see the little prince that he left behind. Who's this little prince character, Adam? Well, he's actually himself when he was younger. He wants to reclaim his youth. The little prince is a metaphor. It's, it's not a real thing. It's not a real person. The person who voices him is though. That's Riley Osborne. He does a terrific job. So what's this story all about? Well, it's quite simple. The mother and daughter have set out to be the best type of people they can be, which unfortunately, is basic bitches. Because every single person on this planet works a nine to five job and has an incredibly tight schedule that they follow. A daily sluggish routine where they dress in gray, they live in a gray house, they drive a gray car, and they live out their gray lives. That is until the aviator next door flies right into their hearts. I mean, not really. It's just the propeller blade that comes off and goes through the side of their house. Still, he gets their attention especially the little girls, who up until this point has only known a life of structure. Father's out of the picture, the mom's doing the best she can to make ends meet and try to mimic the lifestyle that one would consider success. The little girl being wide-eyed and youthful though, still has some creativity in her bones, still has some spirits, some energy, and she seeks out the old man, she's, she's interested. And what he sends to her next is a piece of paper with a story on it that he's created. This sends her imagination soaring as she lives through his eyes, seeing the things he does, where he goes, the people and animals he meets. There's a charming fox voiced by James Franco. There's an evil businessman who counts every star in the sky and eventually will collect them. Ricky Gervais voices the conceited man. Paul Rudd's in here. Paul Giamatti. There's tons of actors coming and going in this thing with just little bit roles. Roles that will eventually lead to a grander final conclusion. If you're on the fence thinking if you should watch this or not, I do have a movie to compare it to that might help you out. And that's called Big Fish. Directed by Tim Burton, it's a wonderful movie. One of his last really great ones. Uh, highly suggest that as well if you haven't seen it. But it's all about storytelling. It's all about capturing an audience. It's all about bottling up those memories and not letting go of your youth, your innocence, your childlike whimsy and wonder. And The Little Prince has symbolism, metaphors, analogies, everything you can think of coming out of every which way. It is really quite a film. One that you could watch multiple times and not only maybe get different meanings from them, but also just notice things that you didn't catch the first time around. The music has a cool vibe to it too. There's this little bit of, ah, 
<laughs> background. It almost feels like a Christopher Nolan movie. Kind of getting stronger as the film progresses. The visuals are fantastic. We have the overall look, which is very Pixar-esque, but more drab. But then when we get into these stories, there's almost a stop motion, paper mache, like claymation to it. I can't even really describe what I'm seeing. It's very unique. It's very fresh. This is a movie that really hooked me from the beginning because of its visuals, because of the wonderful music and the great voice acting. And I just really liked the themes presented here. I liked that it told it in an interesting way. It wasn't just this boring linear story. There was a lot of creativity on display. There was fun characters. I really appreciate the recommendation, Owen. You knocked it out of the park. Highly suggest watching The Little Prince. I don't want to give anything else away. It's definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it. And if you have a family, that's a bonus. Your kids will probably eat it up as well. Thank you to Twitch subscribers, Patreons, and YouTube join members. Without you guys, this show seriously would not exist anymore. YouTube payout is embarrassing. When I do videos like this that are older and not as known, obviously the views are low and that's okay um, because I'm doing this for the real fans of the channel. And uh, I just want you to know that it really does mean a lot. If you did somehow stumble upon this video and you're new, maybe think about subscribing to the channel. Would love to have you, the more the merrier. Like the video if you had a good time. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care. Wow, I kind of already said everything I needed to. So I'm just gonna stand here for a little bit while things show up over there, propagate. Um, I mentioned Patreon, I believe several times and YouTube join. There's a button you can do and you can become a member. Patreon, there's a $1 tier. So if you don't feel like I'm worth that much, you could just say like, eh, here's a dollar. Just shut up already. Um, I did mention Twitch. I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash adamdoesmovies. Not really playing video games that much. Mostly I'm filming stuff there live. Uh, I also wrote a script recently with people. That was a good time. So we're doing a lot of movie related content. I think it's a lot of fun. Occasionally I'll play games. All right, I think that's good.